Caller ID, bitch. <laughs> this is Bike Spirits of Bruce. Let's kick that intro. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we kick this one off, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification. New videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Until it gets a little too cold, we'll probably go down to two. You've been warned. Let's get the other stuff out of the way. You want to save 15% on a Cardo communicator? Check my referral link down below. You want to support me and all my do gooderness like these guys here? Boom! Then you should check my coffee page down below. You want to know why I'm asking you for money? Good question. That link is also down below. So yeah, let's just jump into this. Today we are going into very blasphemous territories. I know a lot of you are probably like, no, none of these, none of these are good because they're remakes. We are talking about the top five horror movie remakes. And like, it's my personal list. You may not agree, whatever. We're gonna go through this anyway. And maybe some of these you haven't watched and you haven't given it a shot to, and you really should. So let's get right into this. Starting off at number five. <laughs> I'm going to go with The Hills Have Eyes, the one from 2006, but there's a, an even bigger caveat here. I'm talking the unrated version. You have to go out and find the unrated version. Like the one that was in theaters was pretty damn brutal. It really was. Uh, but the unrated one gets just a little bit bloodier and a little bit more brutal. For those of you unfamiliar with The Hills Have Eyes, it's it's an older movie. I believe it came out in like the 70s. Uh, it's about just mutants <laughs> out in the desert, family trying to cross the desert, man minding their own business. The mutants show up and all hell breaks loose. And there's a lot of blood, death, violence, cannibalism, and everything else in between. Um, the unrated version, I have literally watched this with people and I have watched them get very uneasy and very cringe and very like just shifty in their seats and stuff. This movie like literally bothers people and it is brutal. Uh, so for a remake, I mean, they, I, I feel like they really nailed this one. This was just an awesome, awesome movie. If you haven't seen this and you're looking for some Halloween horror, definitely get this one on your list. If you haven't watched it in a while, go back and watch it. This one's good. Um, let's go right up to number four. So for this one, I'm talking The Mist. This is a Stephen King movie. It's a remake. It's got Thomas Jane in it. Um, you know, Future Punisher. Honestly, I think I've maybe watched this movie in color once. Aside from that, when you get the Blu-ray or the DVD, it gives you the option to watch it in black and white. This movie really is better served in black and white. Not a lot of killing in here and not a lot of death, but it kind of shows you that whole like the whole social human element, like it, the, the human experiment. There's a bunch of people trapped in a store. They don't know what's out in the mist that's surrounding the store. Um, and they become some crazy uh, mofos. Also in this movie, a lot of like people that ended up on The Walking Dead. I think there's like at least three cast members from The Walking Dead that show up in this movie that then go on to do The Walking Dead. So, I mean, this had a lot of, like if you go and watch this now, you're going to see a lot of familiar faces. And it's just the, the way it ends. It is dark, <laughs> it is so 
dark. And I guess we should get into that real quick. Um, you know, I know I didn't give too much away in those first two, but yeah, there may be some spoilers in this, but these are all older movies, at least by a couple years. So if you haven't seen it yet, you're probably not going to see it, or you really should see it, and maybe some of these spoilers will encourage it. So yeah, but uh, the, the way The Mist ends, uh, it's heavy, man. It's heavy. And uh, I, I really suggest that if you haven't seen this in a while or you've only watched it in color, go back and watch it in black and white. It, it is, it, it gives a whole new element to this. Number three. <coughs> wow, we're just steaming right along here, huh? Now, I know this is a very blasphemous one just because of the movie that it's being remade from but the original writer and director gave it the blessing. He was a producer, he, he is really into it as well. So I am fully confident in saying The Evil Dead. Now, probably not the most cohesive story, but really how many horror movies are. But this, this movie is violent, it is bloody, um, it uses a lot of different practical effects. It does have some of that CG in there, but I mean, there's a lot of practical effects in there. Uh, just watched this with my wife recently and she was cringing really hard at some of those scenes, especially towards the end. The girl gets her hand stuck under the Jeep. Yeah, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. This movie is just a gore fiends fantasy. This is so bloody and it is so good. Like you just gotta get up on this movie. This, this is awesome. So that brings us to number two. Uh, for this one, we're doing The Crazies. This came out in 2010. It's got Timothy Oliphant in it. And quite honestly, like, Timothy Oliphant, I feel like he's a very underrated actor. Um, if you've never watched, like, the series Justified, like, he was the lead in that. He was, he was really good. Even, like, when he did the uh, Die Hard movie where he was the bad guy. Movie sucked. I think it was like Live Free or Die Hard. It was, it was an awful movie. But he was really good in that movie. He chewed up those scenes. And his turn in Hitman, um, like that movie was really cool. I, I feel like he nailed that one really good. Like Timoth Timothy Oliphant, he does a good job at whatever he does. Some of you super nerds may know him from like The Mandalorian and all that. He's the one who had both that's armor. Um, he, was, he was the Wild West Sheriff. Nonetheless, the crazies. Um, again, this is this is one of those ones where, like, a, right around like the 2000s, the early 2000s, they really got back into the blood and the gore and just the the full blown violence of horror movies. And I'm starting to see that come around again, and I'm I'm quite excited about that because like the PG-13 horror movies that we've been getting kind of suck. <laughs> I mean, PG-13 has its place, certain places. It, it Like, you can do, like, good ghost stories and stuff here and there, but when you want to see a good, just bloody slasher movie, that thing's got to be a rated hard R. Like, it's got to be, like, right on the, the edge of, like, NC-17 and X and all that stuff. So, yeah, The Crazies does that. It is, it is a brutal movie. It has, it, it, the, the remake was just, it was so well done. I was completely blown away by how well they did this movie. And again, like they had a lot of really good practical effects in there and then they had a lot of stuff where, I mean, you see the blood, it's good. So before we get to number one, I wanna talk about a few movies that are remakes that can eat a bag of dicks. Picture this, I'm a bag of dicks, put me to your lips. <laughs> because let's let's be honest for every like one good remake there's probably like five horrible remakes so these are the ones that i just cannot stand i think they are just horrible trash dumpster fire garbage like stay away from these first and foremost would be the 2021 remake of wrong turn now here's the thing wrong turn was basically just a ripoff of the hills have eyes except they were just a bunch of inbred mutants that lived in like the forest instead of the desert and it wasn't like radiation and stuff that turned them that way just a lot of inbreeding so surprise west virginia <laughs> But when they remade it, they decided to just get rid of the whole like inbred mutant cannibal thing and went with like some sort of like secret society of like killer, like it, I, I don't even care. I, I tried to watch this and I checked out so hard because it is wrong turn 
in name only. I mean, Wrong Turn has had many sequels, and some of them a little better than others, you know, the definitely the budget went down over the years, the makeup, like effects and stuff like that went down over the years with the budget, but you still knew what you were getting. It was crazy mutant inbred cannibals killing people. Now it's like, oh, secret society, and no. Next up, Texas Chainsaw, 3D. This is the one that came out in 2013 with Alexandra Daddario. Um, really, she's the only good thing about this movie, and I don't mean her acting. <laughs> she is just, she's nice to watch in this movie. <laughs> Aside from that, this movie sucks. It um, has some of the worst lines in it, like period, like even towards the end. So Alexandra Daddario's character is related to uh, Leatherface in this one and even though Leatherface just went through and massacred all of her friends uh, towards the end of the movie they've decided that they have a family bond and she's cool with it and has forgiven them and like you know the people that are now trying to kill Leatherface she throws Leatherface's chainsaw on she's like get him cuz <laughs> this is the dumbest movie possible uh, it is quite possibly one of the most horrible Texas Chainsaw entries and they've had some really really bad ones but this one is just head and shoulders above this was garbage so next up Hellraiser Revelations this is the first movie where Doug Bradley did not play Pinhead so I'm just assuming it was a pin uh, a remake I, I honestly I tried to watch it and uh, I couldn't even stay awake I, this movie was horrible it was boring I don't know how they decided to cast the guy that they had as Pinhead. They they cast this like crazy bug-eyed dude. <laughs> like, and like, he just went off on his own like sort of direction and it wasn't a good direction. I mean, Hellraiser just did its remake with Jamie Clayton as Hell, um, Pinhead. And she's actually pretty good. Like, I'm, I'm fine with that. This dude, nah. And then like they had another one after this with a, a totally different pinhead and uh, again, just boring crap. So, but this one, this one takes the cake. It is just, is is awful. Sharing the number one and number two spot, uh, rearrange them however you want, would be Rob Zombie's Halloween one and two. These two piles of dog shit are just absolutely amazing. First and foremost, you know right away because it's Rob Zombie, Sherry Moon Zombie is in the damn movie because why not? and it is just garbage the first movie i tried to watch it i watched it and i'm like you know what it's not the worst it's not the best i've mentioned before i'm not the biggest halloween fan out of all the slashers that one's towards the bottom for me so i'm like you know whatever um i was like this isn't horrible but it's not good and you could tell that rob zombie intended to make this just one movie because he killed sherry moon zombie in it so when part two came around and he actually returned to directing it, I, I don't even know. This went off the rails so hard. He he forced his you know wife back into the movie. He's like, oh, now she's a spirit leading Michael Myers with a horse. Is why not? I don't care. Uh, and the the most uncomfortable part to me was I went to go see Halloween two. I was killing time. I was waiting to pick up a friend, so I stopped into this like horrible movie theater out in like Lemonster, Mass. Walked in, it was sticky, it was gross, it was cheap. I mean, it was just a dive theater. And there was like one other dude in there and this movie started playing in. In Halloween 2, Rob Zombie decided he was gonna start letting Michael Myers make noise. Because, <laughs> whatever. So Michael Myers is killing a dude behind the counter. And you just hear him going, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> And I'm sitting there in the movie theater just going, Oh, this is how Pee Wee Herman felt. <laughs> like, it was just very uncomfortable. So yeah, those movies just sucked. They were awful. All right, so those are the movies that can eat a bag of dicks. Picture this, I'm a bag of dicks. Put me to your lip. Let's go to number one on my favorite horror movie remakes. <laughs> and at... Uh, it should be obvious if you've ever paid attention to me, my channel, whatever, but it is Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 2003. 
Now this is the one where Arlie Ermey is the sheriff. Um, Leatherface really isn't a main character in there. He pops up in certain par like parts. Like I feel like when they remade this, it was Platinum Dunes that remade this movie. And Platinum Dunes uh, was owned by Michael Bay or like he was invested in it. And they were very hit or miss. Some of their remakes were really cool. Some of them were just, ugh. I mean, like they remade Amityville Horror. And I know that's a very divisive one. To me, I love that one. And for me, I feel like that's a great movie because that is the movie that I think helped show that Ryan Reynolds was more than Van Wilder. So all you Deadpool fans and stuff like that, you can thank Amityville Horror for that because that was really a, a, a turning point for him. Nonetheless, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, Arlie Ermey just chews up the scenes. That dude is a legend. And him as the sheriff, I mean, he is just, he just crushes this movie left and right. Um, I mean, the the kids are all disposable. They, they play their parts just fine. I mean, when they are in pain, when they are like dying, you like, there is some cringe in there. Like it is, it, it, it they, they do some stuff. Like there's a part where like Leatherface takes a dude who just had his leg cut off, comes over, wants to preserve it, takes a fistful of salt and just grinds it up there and wraps them in like meat paper. Like I felt that in my <laughs> like leg. It was just like, oh God, the detail in there, the, the thought that was put into that was just absolutely awesome. I really wish that they continued with this Texas Chainsaw timeline. I realized that in the end of this movie, they cut off one of Leatherface's arms, which I felt was a really dumb move because they could have kept going. They did do the prequel, which I also enjoyed, but they could have went forward on this timeline and I would have been very, very happy with that. But yeah, those are my top five absolute favorites and my top five dogs. So what are yours? Down below, let me know what your favorite horror remake is and what horror remake you absolutely despise is. Throw them down below, sound off. That's what I got for you guys today. October's almost over. I thought a nice horror movie video would be uh, one that, you know, we could all kind of agree on. So yeah, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Share this video with friends. Share it with family. Share it with that one nerd you know who lives in his parents' basement. It's like, uh, oh, horror movie remakes are absolutely blasphemy and they're horrible and they suck. And man, just watch the original. He loves this stuff. Trust me. I'll see you all on the flip side.